Lecture 2.3, Continuity. This is the Grand Canyon in Arizona, taken in 2002. Most of the techniques of calculus require that functions be continuous. A function is continuous if you can draw it in one motion without picking up your pencil. A function is continuous at a point if the limit is the same as the value of the function. This function has discontinuities at x equals 1 and x equals 2. It is continuous at x equals 0 and x equals 4 because the one-sided limits match the value of the function. Some discontinuities are classified as removable. In these continuities, you can fill the hole by redefining the function. In a removable discontinuity, you can cover the hole up with the tip of a pencil and it looks like a continuous function. Other discontinuities are classified as essential discontinuities. One example is the jump discontinuity. Another example is the infinite discontinuity. And the final example is my favorite discontinuity and I hope soon to be yours, the oscillating discontinuity. In none of these cases can we just fill the hole with one point. Interestingly enough, in the oscillating discontinuity, if we zoom in and keep zooming in, it still looks just like this. We can't really tell what happens in the center. Removing a discontinuity. This example has a discontinuity at x equals 1. Let's write an extended function that is continuous at x equals 1. If we take the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1, we can factor the numerator and denominator and cancel out the x minus 1. Now we can evaluate the function and we get a value of 3 halves. So a y value of 3 halves would fill the hole. So our ex extended function is f of x equals x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1 when x is not equal to 1, and 3 halves when x is equal to 1. Note, there's another discontinuity at x equals negative 1 that cannot be removed. The graph looks like this. Continuous functions can be added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, and multiplied by a constant, and the new function remains continuous. Also, composites of continuous functions are continuous. Here are examples of composite functions. In the first example, x squared is a continuous function and sine x is a continuous function, so the composite is also continuous. In the second example, cosine x is a continuous function, and y equals the absolute value of x is a continuous function, so the composite function is also continuous. The Intermediate Value Theorem. 
if a function is continuous between a and b, then it takes on every value between f of a and f of b. In this illustration, x goes from a to b, and y goes from f of a to f of b. Since we know the function is continuous, there are no breaks, it must take on every y value between f of a and f of b. Example 5. Is any real number exactly 1 less than its cube? Note that this doesn't ask what the number is, only if it exists. So what we want to know is, can we find the value of x that satisfies this equation, x equals x cubed minus 1. If we subtract x from both sides, this becomes 0 equals x cubed minus x minus 1. Once again, is there a value of x that will make this true? We rewrite this as a function f of x equals x cubed minus x minus 1. So what we're looking for is an answer to the question, is there a value of x that will make f of x equal 0? If we let x equals 1, f of 1 equals negative 1, and x equals 2, f of 2 equals 5. So, because f of x is a continuous function, we know that as x moves from 1 to 2, y must move from negative 1 to 5 without a break. Since f is a continuous function, by the intermediate value theorem, it must take on every value between negative 1 and 5. Therefore, there must be at least one solution between 1 and 2. You can use your calculator to find an approximate solution. Use the solve command, solve x equal x cubed minus 1 x. And we get 1.32472 as an approximate solution. Graphing calculators can sometimes make non-continuous functions appear continuous. Graph y equals floor x, which is catalog f floor. And we set the resolution to 2. Now this example is graphed on the classic TI-89. You cannot change the resolution on the titanium edition. So the old TI-89 connected the dots so it looked like a continuous function and covers up the discontinuities. If we change the plot style to dot and the resolution to 1, then we get a graph that is closer to the correct floor graph. Of course, the titanium edition already knew this and left the gaps. Once again, the open and closed circles do not show, but we can see the discontinuities.